हेलो फोक्स वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल टूडे वी विल रिव्यू माई होम सर्वर सेटअप दैट आई हैव सेटअप ऑन माई रेस्पेरी बाई फाइव एज यू नो फ्रॉम माई प्रीवियस वीडियो आई हैड ऑर्डर वन रेस्पेरी बाई फाइव एंड आई हैड अटैच वन वन टी बी हार्ड डिस्क येट आई हैवन कॉन्फिगर्ड रेट जीरो ऑन माई लाइक हार्ड डिस्क बेसिकली आई विल शूट अन अदर वीडियो वैन आई कॉन्फिगर रेट जीरो uh basically i will order one uh, raspberry pi 5 uh pci 5 hat and with that you can connect to uh, P, uh like uh, nvme ssds and configure them with n r80 setup so but we will cover that in a later video today we will see uh, like what's there on my home server so first of all i had installed casa os basically casa os is a cloud operating system so let's see uh this is my interface for casa os so as i mentioned casa os is a cloud operating system so it gives you a lot of things out of the box so uh, first thing that uh, i like about casa os and this is one of the highlighting features of casa os that is gives you a full file system um, in the browser itself over here you can like upload or uh, like download files from your raspberry pi or attached hard disk and uh, if you need like you can browse all the files maybe edit some of the files and save them so uh, this is like a very basic file system but uh, it's quite powerful uh, for your server usage uh, i must say so this is one of the highlighting features uh, then basically you can see all your logs and uh, you can even ssh to your uh, Raspberry Pi five, uh, like or in anywhere you have installed it. So, uh, this is uh, your SSH interface. Um, then uh, it gives you bit of logging, like uh, you can see all the logs uh, about your system. Not all the logs, like very basic logs about your system, uh, your storage, your CPU consumption. your network consumption etc so like this gives you very basic things but it is like fr from the leading metric point of view it is good enough for for more detailed logging you can configure grafana or something uh, like on the need basis but uh, for me this is good enough for now uh, yeah then like you can install apps from the casa os app store all these apps are docker containers so but like it makes it very very easy to install apps uh, as compared to docker compose uh, now some of you must be thinking like what can be simpler than writing few things in your docker compose file but trust me this is even faster uh, and uh, one of the highlighting features about these apps are these comes with very very great set of defaults so i remember when i set up arr stack uh, like with their docker compose uh, it took me quite some time uh, to configure all the variables to configure all the media paths but when i installed uh, from the app store all the app for example radar sonar problar comes with very like good default so it makes it very very fast to install the apps so you can simply click install and things will simply install uh for now if you want to add your own customized app you can simply specify the docker image the tag give a title give a port volumes and the environment variables if you want to and then few like memory limits or cpu shares and it will generate a docker compose file for you and uh, will uh, auto run or manage your container you can simply go to here and uh, shut down your container or restart your container all those stuff you can do from the interface as well um yeah so basically casa os brings everything into one single place be it basic logging your file system your ssh interface your logs uh, your all the docker uh, containers and then it provides you with this very beautiful interface uh, basically i'm uh, i when i used to set up with my like uh, without casa os with the bare docker compose file uh, i i i used to had uh, like write very long configuration files for this home dashboard uh, 
लाइक इधर विद होमर और लाइक आई हैव यूज्ड अ लॉट ऑफ टूल्स बट ऑल द टूल्स रिक्वायर्ड मी टू राइट सम सॉर्ट ऑफ कॉन्फ़िग फाइल बट द बेनिफिट ऑफ कासा ओएस इज इट ऑटो जनरेट्स दिस कॉन्फ़िग एंड यू आर जस्ट लाइक एज सुन एज यू इंस्टॉल समथिंग यू आर गुड टू गो सो दिस मेक्स इट वेरी वेरी इजी टू मैनेज थिंग्स so moving next uh, i have like the full arr stack setup so which i used to download media as you know radar is for downloading movies sonar is for downloading tv series and qubit torrent is your bit torrent client uh, problar is more of a uh, index manager uh, basically you can add all the indexes uh, to your problar and uh, problar can automatically sync your indexes into radar sonar uh, i have then installed jellyfin uh, jellyfin is a media server uh, you can, some of you might may like plex but uh, i find jellyfin more convenient uh, so this is all about my uh, media servers uh, like and then i have installed adguard home so adguard home is more like uh, a pihole uh, alternative uh, some of you must have used pihole uh, i personally find adguard home uh, more convenient basically it's a dns uh, your self hosted dns server you can like specify the root dns in settings like basically in general settings or uh, dns settings so basically you can specify your upstream upstream dns servers uh, and you can configure uh, basically let, let's say i have configured all uh, my devices to use this dns server uh, the benefit of this is it auto blocks uh, few ads your trackers your um, like uh, let's say adult website adult content it automatically blocks all of that uh, and on top of that uh, it also like when it blocks trackers etc and your ad advertisements it also blocks your youtube uh, ads etc uh, so if you want to use you can use it for that purposes uh, but uh, one another feature is there is one configuration which is ad blocking uh, ad, uh, sorry uh, sir uh, unblocking using that you can unblock few websites which your isp is blocking uh, on a dns level so you can make those websites work across your devices so uh, this is a great way to manage like your uh, traffic and uh, resolve your dns queries so i find it very helpful and uh, like uh, first it is it has uh, provided me like the speed of uh, like i i my isp dns is usually slow as compared to this dns where i have like configured multiple um upstreams and uh, i have configured like parallel requests use parallel queries to speed up resolving so my dns queries resolve a lot faster and uh, hence like the websites open quite fast uh, so this is that card home then let's talk about n10 n10 as you know is a workflow managing uh, manager so if you want to do some sort of a work like if your data is coming from this and you want to process your data and then you want to take some action basis that event so you can use n8 and for that purposes i i use n8 and for a few things that i use in my professional work so uh, n8 and i have configured as a workflow tool uh, to manage things Uh, and automate few tasks. For example, let's say one of the uh, one of the examples can be like if you have some calendar event, you want to log into your Google Sheet or something, or create a note in in your Notion. You can do that using any time as well. Uh, then I have Adminer. Uh, Adminer is uh, interface for my databases. So as you see, I have also installed Postgres. So sometimes I need a web interface over Postgres to run few queries manually and uh, like see the data or uh, like all those all the things can be done using cli but i find adminer quite powerful uh, then one thing 
Casta OS also provides you, it gives you ability to add uh, custom external links as well. So for example, this uh, is the external link. This is not something I have installed on my Casta OS, uh, but uh, like this is the external app. Uh, so I have like configured a link so that uh, it becomes part of my home server as well. Uh, it gives me that feel, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it may depend on you, but I find it really, really convenient. Then uh, Portainer is there. Uh, Portainer I use a lot when I have to, let's say, access the shell of a container or see logs of a container. Basically, uh, I can also see logs of the container by going to uh, settings and then uh, terminal and logs. So over here also I can see the logs. But uh, uh, like sometimes, uh, like when a container crashes or something, some sort of that stuff happens then it it becomes very very easy with portainer to access your containers and see the logs or manage your containers uh, i also use um, portainer to let's say remove stale images that are not being used like for example these images are unused or you can simply go uh, check and remove these images uh, so so that is quite convenient so yeah for example over here you can remove a few images which are unused so portainer makes it very very easy to manage your docker containers uh, and i personally love container uh, personally love portainer it also gives you interface to manage your networks volumes events also portainer is a great app to if you are managing everything on docker and uh, using docker containers so we have already covered postgres and then uh, what i'm using is my speed so this is a great tool uh, since i have like uh, a gbps connection so i was so what it does is uh, it like after at a certain intervals uh, let's say uh, at of one hour we, we can configure as well uh, it it will test your network and the log uh, and will keep logging things like your download speed upload speed and ping time so now for example this is uh, the data of my server uh, like my raspberry pi 5 so this is the speed i am getting uh, so this is also a great uh, tool to have uh, so basically you know uh, what is the download speed you are getting from your isp and uh, if you are facing some uh, internet speed related issues you can simply provide them the logs uh, from my screen so this also becomes a great tool then i have a player solver installed like basically some sites require player solver if you want to access them uh, over the api or uh, maybe like from the interface as well like pro i have configured player solver with problar and uh, have configured tags so some of the torrent indexes uh, need player solvers uh, to resolve things so yeah then then i have few personal servers uh, like uh, these are my uh, uh, these are uh, my websites that i have particularly hosted over casa os earlier i had a amazon instance uh, i had installed uh, i had hosted things using aws but uh, now since i have my home server set up and uh, i have one public ip pointing to my home server uh, so I have con I have like hosted my personal websites as well uh, from from this Raspberry Pi only. Uh, that's why it becomes even more important to configure RAID zero. Uh, basically, RAID zero with NVMe SSD and NVMe SSD crash a lot less as compared to uh, like plain old HDDs. Uh, then you have uh, image. Image is a great tool. Uh, basically, it is an alternative to Google Photos. So I used to face a lot of trouble uh, with Google Photos because I had a lot of photos and videos and my Google photo storage used to get full very often and uh, I was not willing to buy the premium of Google Photos uh, because uh, I don't need it. So I had self-hosted image so all of my phone, my wife's phone has image app installed. So I personally love image uh, and it is a great tool. It is still in development but the work so far has been ground shattering uh i would recommend image to anybody looking out for a google photos alternative 
uh, then you have nginx proxy manager nginx proxy manager is a great tool to manage your nginx configuration uh, it has uh, an interface just not your uh, uh, like uh, nginx configuration but it also gives you a uh, interface to basically um, like configure things uh, configure ssl certificates etc etc and your proxy host etc so so yeah basically nginx proxy manager is also a great tool then i have redis which my websites are using so i have like i have created a docker network for my websites and uh, have installed um, nginx proxy manager uh, and just exposed nginx proxy manager uh, to the public and uh, all of my docker uh, containers are not exposed to the world so nginx proxy manager uh, solves a lot of things for me in that regard uh, we can also do a lot of things like rate limiting etc with nginx so that also makes it quite a handy tool uh, this is more like it it's a very simple thing uh, yeah a lot of folks might ask why don't i have nextcloud set up on my home server so i had installed nextcloud uh, but uh, like i didn't find it uh, basically to me uh, for my use case nextcloud didn't make a lot of sense to me because i still use gmail uh, it is very difficult for me to not use gmail and configure uh, everything uh, on my self-hosted server right now in future i i may plan to get out of gmail and uh, google drive stuff uh, basically for example uh, today i have uh, completely gotten out of uh, google photos uh, similarly I, I might choose to get out of uh, like google docs and uh, uh, google mail but uh, currently i have a lot of documents lot of uh, access control uh, that uh, is associated with my documents which i don't want to lose out so if i move all the documents to my local system i will have to uh, create all those emails and uh, provide them the similar access and ask those users to use this so it is a bit complicated for me to use nextcloud as of now so i haven't configured nextcloud as of now mm, so yeah this is more or less um, about my uh, home server setup um, yeah thank you see you